This week on the Shred School, we're going to combine the kickflip and the pop shove it to do the kickflip shove it, aka the varial kickflip. Let's go. Welcome back to the Shred School, of course, where I'm teaching you the first 12 tricks I believe you should learn on a skateboard. Uh, this may be the hardest trick in the course. There's a reason it's not last. I want to give you some extra time to do this one, um, but uh, it is definitely a cool one to learn. It's not super popular with pros, but it's starting to make a comeback, and it's absolutely an important stepping stone for other things you're going to do in the future. So let's get into it. You're going to need a really good pop shove it for this one and a kickflip, although that is semi optional. And the reason I say that is because some people find it easier to learn the kickflip. Uh, they find it hard to flick off the side for a kickflip. With this one, though, the board is spinning, so the flick is actually more off the nose. It can actually go a little bit in front. So for some people, it's easier than a plain kickflip. So for that reason, I'm going to say you don't necessarily need to have those kickflips. If you had trouble with that one and you skipped it, you can still try this one. With this one, I'm going to give you the option as to whether you want to do it stationary or not. Uh, because it's a spinning trick, I would generally recommend not doing it stationary and actually trying to get a little bit of speed going to, to learn it but it's a little bit complicated. So with this one, when you pop the, the pop shove it and the board starts to move, the flick can make a big difference. It can affect the, uh, the way that the board spins. So it's a little bit less important than it is uh, normally. So I'm gonna leave that up to you to decide if you're comfortable or not um, doing it uh, rolling. But to do the trick, you're going to want to combine the foot positions for a kickflip and a pop shove it. Um, so, you know, something about like this and like this. Uh, one thing I would do for this one, because the flick is not quite the same, I might move this foot in slightly more. Um, it's something to experiment with at least, because the board is going to be going away. It's going to kind of move where your flick spot is. And when we get into the the troubleshooting step, we're going to talk about how to adjust some some things like that. But vaguely, something about like this is where you would want to be. So you want to start the trick like a normal pop shove. Again, you're going to want to be pretty good at these, at least comfortable. Um, you don't have to be extremely consistent because, again, this trick is different. The pop is the same, but it's not going to feel the same in the air, and it's not going to be the same to land. Um, but you want to start that uh, pop, pop shove, and don't be afraid to put some actual pop into this one. You can get some decent height uh, with this trick. In fact, when I was recording these, I was making an effort to do it lower. Like, if I just casually try one, it ends up getting pretty high. It's one of the highest tricks for me uh, that I could casually do. Like, I'm making an effort to not get so high on this so it looks more, you know, typical for how it, it w would look when you first start them. Um, but yeah, pop that tail. Don't be afraid to pop it kind of hard. And the board is going to spin uh, before the flick starts. So you're not going to flick off this side because the board is not going to be there. The spin starts before the, the flip does. It's going to start to spin. For me, the flick is actually more ahead. My foot, it, or my, my, um, leg is kicking forward kind of like I'm doing a heel flip but my ankle is still doing the kick flip so it, it pops and I flick out ahead so I'm flicking my ankle while kicking out my my leg um, you can adjust exactly how that works for for you but for for me I start the flip there the board starts to come around now there's a couple of things that can that can change here um, as you flick the board you might push it you can push it this way or you can pop it you know you have your weight too far back and the board goes this way um, so you want to keep an eye on on the board as it starts to come around and see if it looks like it's going to stay there uh, and try to commit to it if it seems safe so if the board is going to uh, come around and it's staying in, in a good spot then you can try to catch that and land on it one thing that you will probably run into as you learn this trick is that you have to figure out the flip angle and the in-air control for this trick. Uh, it may take a little bit of, of work to, to, to balance it all out and try different things. As I briefly talked about uh, in the beginning, your front foot and the way that you flick the board can make a big difference as to where the board lands. So if you do a, a shove it, as soon as the board leaves the ground, it's already determined where it's going to go. 
if you have your weight too far uh, this way, you don't pop it, you just kind of do a gentle kick turn style, the board's gonna go that way and there's no pulling it back uh, once you're in the air. With this one, the flick can actually control where the board goes. Uh, in fact, there's a very similar trick called the dolphin flip where you start to pop the, the tail, the board spins slightly, and then you flick hard down and the board actually does this. Uh, for some people, um, they don't all do it the same way, but for some people, the board starts, like the placement of the feed and, and all that stuff, starts exactly like this trick. And it all is dependent on that front foot. So if the board's not landing where you would expect it to, or it's you know flying away, it's going off axis and going crazy, that is more likely to be with how your front foot is flicking. This is definitely a two-footed trick. Um, you know, for a, a bunch of the tricks we've done in this course, you're you're doing something with one foot and the other one's just kind of getting up out of the way. You know, with a kick flip, after you pop the tail, your back foot, you know, it's just kind of there. With the shove, your front foot's just got to slide up out of, out of the way and wait for it. With this one, is both. So it's a little bit tougher to figure out what kind of problems you'll have because it could be one foot, the other, the combination of both, the timing, all that kind of thing. So uh, if your weight is in a nice spot, you know, you're not way you know, far back like this trying to do the, the trick, your weight's not completely on your, your front foot. If you're, if you're balanced and comfortable and everything is good with that, um, the angle of your flick might be controlling where the, where the board goes. So um, it's, it's gonna be important to place your foot in a, you know, in a, you can try some different spots for it. If you're flicking it really soon, uh, I'm not sure how you could, but if you flicked it when the board's only right here, you might want to be more on the on the edge. If you're going to flick it more like me, you might want it, you know, where I'm kind of flicking out like that, more placed like this. So try some different spots like that. Uh, and something else that helps a lot is to picture the board popping like really hard, popping like like this, like flat, completely. It doesn't even spin. You just pop it completely, uh, end over end, uh, look like that. And as you do that, you flick a full kick flip, you know, and that, it's not going to do that. Even on, on mine, when you, when you watch it, they look very flat, uh, but it feels like I'm doing that. It feels like I'm popping the board straight up. And sometimes it helps to exaggerate it, you know, and picture something that's not actually gonna happen. You know, if you've ever played darts and you keep being off to the left slightly, you might aim over to the right, um, and you're not actually gonna hit that spot, but you know that if you're looking at that spot, you're actually gonna hit the spot you are trying to hit. And with this, popping the board more flat, like completely hard like that, that might be the thing that, that helps you get the board to be in the right position for you as it comes around. The second thing I want to talk about is commitment and landing. For me, this is the toughest part because um, when the board uh, will catch my front foot sometimes and it, it'll land, instead of being right here, it'll land about right here. Like eh, about right here. And it's not so bad. I could get my feet on the board, but I'm going to slip out. And for me, I have to like keep track of the board in the air and make sure it's a safe one for me to try to uh, commit to and, and land because that happens from time to time. In fact, with this one, I actually broke my foot. Uh, I'll tell you all about that in, in a second. But hopefully that should give you enough to try to figure out how to uh, figure out what's going on with yours. You can advance this trick in a couple of different ways. Of course, the standard, doing them a little bit faster and a little bit smoother. It's also not so hard to get extra height on this one. You can actually get a decent catch on this one without as much effort as it takes to do with different tricks. Um, so that is a good goal as well. And you can try them fakie. These are all pretty standard things that I suggest uh, throughout this course. But if you're feeling especially strong and brave, um, you can do a fakie big spin flip. You have learned the fakie big spin. Uh, if you combine that with this trick, you may be able to pull that off. It is a pretty difficult trick compared to the things we're, we're doing. It's uh, a more advanced thing that might take you some time to get there, but it never hurts to try it, except for physically. My tip of the week is to give yourself some recovery time because you may find that you just re-injure yourself if you don't give yourself enough time. And I've learned this lesson over and over again. 
and I'm still not doing a great job of uh, actually learning it. But I sprained my ankle very badly in 2006. Uh, it was not a break, but the doctor said that it sprained so badly it would have been better if it broke because then they could just, you know, put it in position and it would heal. Um, but from the time that I sprained it to the time I could comfortably kickflip again was about a full year. And it didn't have to be because when it started to feel good, when I could walk comfortably, I would start to skate and I would be doing... You know, stuff that doesn't require a, a flick. I would ollie, I would do like a foot plant type tricks. I would do all kinds of stuff that didn't require flicks. And then I would try one and it would kill. Now I would re-injure my ankle. It would take weeks to get back on the board. And then I'd try a kickflip again and I would be out again. So you just have to give yourself some time to actually recover from that one. Which is what I'm trying to do now because I did break a bone in my foot, I think, when I was trying this one. So, you know, I was talking about how sometimes I flick and it kind of goes out too far uh, ahead and I'm pretty sure it's not going to be safe to land, so I don't try. This was an attempt uh, like that where the board was flying out, kind of grabbed my foot too much and was going this way. And so I decided to plant my back foot. I'm not going to try to land, I'm just going to plop it out on the ground. But what happened was the board ended up coming around and ended up being in a pretty good spot, in fact. And the wheel landed right on top of my foot. And I landed with my weight on my, my front foot. It doesn't look bad in the clip, it really doesn't. But it's been about a month because I filmed all of the tricks first and then I'm trying to go back and, and, uh, and do all, all these on camera spots. So um, it's been about a month and every now and then I'll step wrong in just the right way and it still hurts in, in that spot. Uh, it could be some kind of interior bruise or something. I'm, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm pretty sure I cracked a, a foot bone doing that. So I'm going to try to take it easy for a bit and learn my own lesson to give myself uh, time to recover. Your homework for this week is to try a trick you don't think you could possibly do. Uh, for example, a 360 flip. You have some of the tools. You can do this trick. You spins half of, of, of the way. Uh, you can do a fakie big spin. The board spins 360 on that one. You could theoretically do a 360 flip. The big difference with that is instead of just a, a quick pop and then a flick that kind of helps uh, the spin, you've got to scoop it like that and make sure you pop it pretty hard. I have a full trick tip um, for that if you if you need it. But the reason why I, I suggest that it's probably not going to be it's probably not going to work uh, work out. I don't think you're going to land this. It's very soon in your skateboarding career to be able to do a 360 flip. But I don't want you to hold back because of what you think should be possible, you know. And you could be a prodigy at something. Not necessarily that trick, but you could theoretically get really good at something that shouldn't be in your range. And I don't want you to be stuck to doing the tricks that I tell you. I think on average, the tricks I'm giving are going to be the most helpful. But for you, you might be able to do something that is not in this course and wouldn't be, you know, for a while. So, you know, don't be afraid to try something new, something that you don't think you can do, just to kind of mark it and get an idea of what that trick is going to be like. It might help you learn it uh, when the time comes. And also, when you get that varial kickflip, make sure you post it on Instagram with the hashtag ShredSchool101. Me and Jake are going to look through all of the submissions, and at the end of the course, we're going to pick an overall winner to get this prize pack from Quasi. Also, if you need a little bit of extra help with the trick, there is a written blog version of it at RadRadVideo.com. Next week on the Shred School, we're going to learn the Casper, which is a trick so cool that it actually single-handedly is the reason I started skateboarding. So I can't wait to teach you that one. I will see you there.